core issue is looking at it as a social impact issue instead of as a business and a business imperative. I think the second is that there's always um, one-sided blanket solution towards the diversity in tech or diversity in any workforce. Um, with us, we we take it as a multifaceted approach that there's behaviors that the company's engaging in or, and applicants are withdrawing and there's industry behavior. So all those behaviors combined together allow for either the needle to move or to not to move. For example, we found that women are more likely to accept job offers across all tech companies, regardless whether they're a couple hundred or a couple thousand. And that's what really moved the, the needle for women in tech. <laughs> so... If we were to compare tech to other industries, I don't know if you have the statistic yeah. at your fingertips or not, but how is tech different than, say, finance or the media business or Hollywood or the insurance business? Is it radically different or you know, are certain groups overrepresented, underrepresented? And what is the cause of that problem? Is it the companies? I'm gonna, so I, just, I realize there's two questions here, but I kind of think it's one that I think a lot of people struggle with, and you are actually in the thick of this, so you probably know better than all of us. What, what is the difference between our industry and others with different uh, ethnicities or groups? Which ones are overrepresented, underrepresented? And then the second part of the question is, do we know why? Is it the fault of the companies for not doing enough? Are there not enough people who have graduated with the degrees that these companies are looking for in different ethnic groups? What's the, what do you think the reasons for the difference in um, diversity between our industry and others? I think other industries, let's take finance or yeah. media, those one are directly impacted by consumers, right? The consumers go ahead and say, okay, I want to either open this bank account with this bank um, and they're t targeting and they're really listening to my needs um, and or media as well. Like a movie, as you saw recently, a lot of other female-led casts have done very well at the box office. So obviously the consumer is really... And I think with tech, we forget about the user end user. And so we forget that, you know, filters for certain um, Snapchats um, are not very... Actually are don't do well with darker skin huh. folks. And so like no one thought about it there at the table and mm -hmm. forgot we become our innovators and creators and we, and we are s such in a silo that we don't understand how our products are impacting the end users as much as we think it should. So I think the first thing with our industry is to really acknowledge that the end users are really the ones that are driving our growth. Um, having been at, at Twitter early on, I, re I saw the growth among African Americans as well as international, and catering to that should have, you know, helped Twitter a little bit more um, as it relates now. And I think on the other end, I think um, there are over representations of groups here, but I think everything we were, t my team and I, we were talking this morning that everything's really anecdotal. Everything's like, there's not enough people graduating with this degree or they're not applying and there's no data around it. And we come in and we say, here's the data. We put our own, just received the patent, the provisional patent on our models. And so we say, here's the data before you start acting upon it. Hey everybody, I want to welcome NetSuite as a new partner here at This Week in Startups. And if you're listening to this, you're probably a business owner and a leader, and you probably have said one of the following to yourself, why is it taking accounting so long to close the books? And we beat our revenue goal, but we lost money. Why? And the dreaded, we're getting audited. Yes, all of these things are a sign that you've outgrown your business management software. Or maybe you're not even using any software. QuickBooks and spreadsheets work fine at the start of a company. Of course, we all do that. But now there's too many mistakes and delays and you can't get answers fast. So you need the number one business management solution for growing companies. That is NetSuite from Oracle. NetSuite from Oracle is going to solve all these problems. You're going to know what's going on in your business in real time. Revenue, expenses, customers, orders, even your HR department, everything in a gorgeous dashboard, on your phone even. And their current clients include people you know, like GitHub, Local Analytics, Localytics rather, PlanGrid, and 88% of Bessemer's next cloud unicorns are using NetSuite by Oracle. You're up and running fast, and it's the last business system you're ever going to need. So here's your call to action. 
Very simple. Go to netsuite.com slash twist and you will get your free guide. That guide is called Overcoming Your Five Obstacles for Growth. Okay, and let's get back to this amazing episode. 